I think the biggest fallacy uh, that was made by uh, many policymakers in the West was this assumption that uh, somehow dictators wouldn't be able to grow economically if they send the internet. There was this uh, very, there is this very deep rooted assumption in, you know, in Western uh, media, but also in, in sort of public discourse that you either send the internet and then your economy suffers, or you let the internet in and then political liberalization occurs. That's what's known as the dictator's dilemma. And the notion of the dictator's dilemma actually has been around since 1985, I think, or 1987, when George Shultz actually wrote an article about it for Foreign Affairs before the internet. And it still dominates uh, how people in the West think about the political effects of the internet. The problem here, I think, is that uh, it severely understates uh, and underestimates the ability of modern censorship uh, to be customized to the needs of authoritarian states. Uh, you cannot grow economically only if you have to ban the same websites for everybody, right? If you can manage to separate, uh, you know, investment bankers from human rights activists, then you can grow economically if you let investment bankers to access anything they want online while keeping human rights activists limited to a few government-approved websites. Um, and uh, the way in which to do that is, of course, to rely on the kind of social media and the kind of social information that uh, is aplenty on the internet. You know, if you have 25 other investment bankers as your online friends on a site like Facebook or LinkedIn, and if everything that you have been reading online for the past two years have been articles from Wall Street Journal and Financial Times, chances are there is no point for the Chinese government to censor you. Right? If, on the other hand, if you have 25 human rights activists as your friends on Facebook, and if all you have been reading for the last you know, two years were critical reports uh, you know, accusing China of human rights violations, chances are you shouldn't be online to begin with from the perspective of the government. Right? So uh, the battle uh, and the future battle over this will actually uh, you know, all consist of governments basically trying to customize their censorship and tap into the vast resources of data that users disclose voluntarily.